we have to be careful how we pretend to be something that we're not. We must be very careful that what we do and what we say and how we behave ourselves is not calculated to deceive or to fool people into thinking that we have what we don't have or we are what we are not. And I think the Apostle Paul sets this concept, this idea in, uh, in solidly into the a realm of scriptural teaching when he says this know also that in the last days perilous times shall come and then he gives a long list of leading indicators and things that point to the ushering in of perilous times he says when men become lovers of their own selves you know perilous times have come when men become covetous, when they love to boast and brag about what they got and credit themselves for getting what they got, then you know perilous times are upon us. When you see an epidemic of pride and men become full of themselves, you know perilous times have come. When children are disobedient to parents, somebody ought to say amen. Uh, disobedient to parents on an unprecedented scale, you know perilous times are here. When you observe folks becoming more and more unthankful, unholy, and, and, and when you encounter more and more mothers and fathers without natural affection, and when the unnatural affection between people of the same sex being celebrated and encouraged, you know that perilous times have come. And when it becomes crystal clear that even those who populate our churches, you can't get them back on Sunday night or Wednesday night because they seem to be lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. You sure enough know that perilous times have come. And so he then diagnoses their case and he says they have a form of of godliness but deny the power thereof and he gets to the heart of the matter and he says these folks are pretenders they're operating under pretense of godliness he uses a word in the original Greek that means outward semblance it means a facade so when he says they have a form of godliness He's saying, that's just on the outside. But there's a, that's, a, that's, a, that's a semblance, that's a facade. In, in the vernacular of the street, he says, they just fronting. Mm -hmm. They just fronting, just pretending to be godly, but there is no genuine power behind the facade. You see the word in the Greek, when he says denying the power, that word there is dunamis which refers to the power that is inherent in the gospel. You see, Paul says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, for it is the dunamis. It is the power of God unto salvation. In Romans 14 and 16, Paul says, this same power is the power that uh, raised Jesus from the grave. The same power in the gospel is the power that is able to transform the lives of individuals. The kind of power that can turn a pimp into a preacher. Turn a drunk into a deacon. I'm talking about the power inherent in the gospel. The kind of power that would turn a prostitute from a Saturday night trickster into a Sunday school teacher. Uh -huh, that's the kind of power that's in the gospel. Why y'all looking at me like that? Some of us used to be Saturday night tricksters. Uh -huh. uh, but because of the power in the gospel, it can transform a man into something that can be used by God. Yeah, yeah, pretending to be godly. But there's no genuine power behind it. 
kind of power that we're talking about uh, is the power uh, in uh, the gospel. And that power is none other than Holy Ghost power. You see, you see, the gospel uh, is not the words of men, but it's the words of the Holy Spirit. Uh, the Bible says, knowing this first, that no prophecy of the Holy Scriptures uh, is of any private interpretation, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. Uh, the people whom Paul introduces to us here have never been transformed by the power of God. They'll attend church and go through the motions of religion. They dress up in their Sunday best, looking all pious. They say amen and praise the Lord, but it's all for show. They don't practice what they profess, and their conduct exposes the lie of their pretense. I'm talking about folk who smile in your face on Sunday and stab you in the back on Monday. Uh-huh, that's what I'm talking about. I'm talking about folk who will say praise the Lord, hallelujah, and can't wait to get out the door to get on the phone and talk to folk and say, honey, you ought to seen her. Yeah, you ought to seen him in there today. Uh-huh. Folk who have not really, really, really been transformed by, by the power of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Uh, Paul tells Timothy, he says, from such you turn away. Because they're hazardous to your spiritual health. In this text we see, uh, yeah, maybe I ought to say that again. You know, when you come upon folk who are pretenders, who are just fronting, just playing church. Uh, Paul says you turn away from them folk because uh, they have not really been transformed by the gospel of Jesus Christ. And I want to tell you something. I didn't come in here to judge nobody. I, I, I don't, I'm not judging, but I am, uh, I, I am aware that the Bible says you know the tree by the fruit that it bears. And so I'm a fruit inspector. Uh -huh. I'm just inspecting some fruit this morning and encouraging you to do the same thing. Be careful how you hang around with folk who have not been truly transformed by the gospel of Jesus Christ. 